Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, it shows. Perfect. So, good night, everyone, and welcome to the um, fourth episode of the Youth's Voice Net. We have with us Mr. Shanti Padna. Um, we had her husband. I think it was like, was it last week? No. It was the week before last week? Week before. Yeah. So tonight we have her and we'll be speaking on forgiveness. Yeah. So we'll be speaking on forgiveness. Um, when you come in, just be sure to share the live stream. And thank you so much for joining. Um, so we know that forgiveness is a very wide topic and we want to discuss on these things because that you know it affects us if we don't you know get over these things and if we don't you know deal so and i know that even a lot of times as young people friends might do something or family might do something our family member might do something and we just we walk with it we with it we have it in our hearts and all these things but tonight we have a solution for you and tonight, um, Shante will be sharing um, forgiveness. So don't come with that um, with your heart, heart um, your heart, heart, <laughs> uh, expecting, you know, to get something that will help you to change. Because listen, bitterness, not good. Bitterness, that does not bring you anywhere so yeah. you need to learn something from those stuff without um me talking anymore shanti <laughs> okay. good night zosha good night guys um are you first i'm gonna say that it's an honor to be here uh what you are doing it is amazing honestly it is it's so amazing where there's a platform for young people to come and speak, to share their journey, to share their testimonies, what they have been through. Because, you know, sometimes young people feel like they can't speak. Sometimes they feel like, you know, they don't have a voice. So this platform, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. And I commend you. And I just want to encourage you to just keep going, keep going. Whenever you feel frustrated, just remember that the Lord was the one that birthed this vision in you. And just continue. Cool. I'm holding you accountable where this thing is concerned. So, guys, good night. Thank you. Ah, Thank you. <laughs> I'm nervous. What the Lord's will shall be done. So, <laughs> guys, I know that this is a yeah. very touchy topic. I know that you know when I hear forgiveness. It come like one of the Christian value them, and not just Christian, but like people on a whole. It's like when they hear the term forgiveness, they start feel like, boy, boy, you know, like a burden is on you. But we need to understand the importance of forgiveness. Like, it's not a joke. It's not something to play with. And I do believe that if we really understood how unforgiveness, how dangerous unforgiveness is. We really would not harbor some of the things that we harbor. So, oh, what's the definition of forgiveness? Uh, forgiveness is basically being ready and willing to forgive. And if we're going to talk about forgiveness, we have to talk about first unforgiveness. Mean like you're, you're unwilling to let go of some of the things that you've gone through. And tonight, I don't know if you if you guys know about Ahita film, but tonight I want to focus on his story. Uh, Ahita Field was David's chief counselor. Like David could always call on Ahita Field to, you know, give him right counsel. Like the Bible says that Ahita Field's counsel was as if. You, somebody I consult God like the word like God I speak like 
him a consult. It's like a God come down and a talk, basically. That's how I hate to feel. That's how when I hate to feel speak, that's what it's like. So I hate to feel is also um, Bathsheba's grandfather. You guys know Bathsheba, um, the woman where David go up on the roof and watch her and, you know, take her and sex her and kill her husband. You know Bathsheba. And... Aita feel it didn't it didn't um tell like where Aita feels bitterness grew from with David, but later on I think it was in Second Samuel. Second Samuel, I don't remember the exact scripture, but later on in Second Samuel. It tells us that um, Ahithophel started to conspire with Absalom because, you know, Absalom, David's son, was going after David's head, basically. Ahithophel, remember, said David trusted counsel. I know one way David can always call and, and ask for counsel and everything. And he started to conspire with Absalom to get rid of David. Now, Ahithophel told Absalom to go sleep with David, concubine in public so you know a great shame that on david as king for you no know, same father in son actually asleep with him concubines them oh not a public where everybody can see remember say i eat i eat a feel i tell absalom these things right and then i think it was in second samuel 17 why didn't i write these <laughs> second samuel chapter 17 Ahithophel said to Absalom, let me pursue David and kill him, basically. Like, pursue him and kill him. And Yushai, you guys, you should guys hear your story. Yushai was David's companion. Yushai sent, um, David sent Yushai to Absalom to counsel him and to try to um, counteract Ahithophel's counsel, because as I said, the way how he counsels, you know, people just follow, follow through. And when Yushai counteracted Ahithophel's counsel, Ahithophel realized that his counsel was not being followed, and then he killed himself. He hanged himself because he was so unforgiving and so bitter towards David that when he realized that he was not going to get the revenge that he wanted to get on David, him couldn't help it. Him got to kill himself. And I want you guys to really look at this. I want you guys to take note. I want you guys to look very careful on this. This man went from being... A man that when he speaks, it sounds like a God himself attack. To a man who is so bitter and want revenge, ended up not getting revenge and hang himself. Guys, please do not take unforgiveness lightly. Do not take holding grudges lightly. Do not. And I can share my experience. I have so I have countless um, I have countless some of the experience where I had to forgive. I had to forgive. I just had to forgive. I just had to forgive. And there was one time when I was like, God, why am I always I forgot to say sorry first? You know, because you get, I, I, I often get in some issues with somebody and God would be like, go apologize. I mean, sir, but I know me wrong. Why? But because I'm afraid of God. And not, not like fear, like, you know, scary fear or anything. Like the reverence that I have for him. And I want to honor him. I want my life to please him. I often go and apologize. And there was one instance when I went and apologized. And the person's response was, that's what I thought. And for a split second, for a split second, I almost forgot that I was a Christian. 
I almost reacted in a way that, you know, God would, God would have been very pleased <laughs> if I had reacted that way. But thank God I didn't. But as I was saying, I, I often had to be the one to go apologize first. And then I was in a, I was in a situation where some people who I expected to understand what was happening in my life at the time, they didn't understand, right? And I was pissed. I was pissed. Like people, pe people were saying a whole lot of stuff about me. People were belittling me. People were calling me all sorts of names and them just have their own perception of me. And like in the moment, the people that I needed the most to have my back, and it's not that they are bad people, you know. Let me let me just say something. It's not that they are bad people. It's just that sometimes the Lord want the Lord wants to take us to a level where not everyone can understand what He's doing, right? And He wanted to change something in me because my issue was that I wanted validation from them, basically. If you, if you understand what I'm saying, so the Lord had to not allow them to understand what was happening pretty much and i was yo i was angry i was i was bitter hey i'm gonna tell you something man cersei aloe vera what other one named sulfur bitters not have nothing upon me. Nothing it had on me. How bitter I was. Like I was a boiling pot of everything with bitter. Seriously. And I would I would I would be so angry. I would be so angry with them and I curse them, I slandered them gossip my chat my course my, i just went listen i just went on i didn't care i just went on and i just went on and i just went on and i fed my bitterness boy i want, I want you guys to hear me i fed it i i lived on it i slept on it listen me eat breathe and sleep every single thing we could have possibly think of that contributed to my bitterness because i was saying that listen i don't deserve this i don't deserve this what you're doing to me you're wrong you're not fair to do this to me may i deserve it and that's what i was saying so i thought that i had all the right in the world basically and i tell you something else. hey man Sleep on it, man. Sleep. And when I have a, when I have experience something, I want to just know on Lego. I don't know what it's like to be raped. I don't know what it is like to like um be molested or anything. But I know that there are people out there who have experienced these things and they just them just live in that like them growing at it. Them just get all in that. Some of them got them grave with it. So that's where I was, and I fed it, and I fed it, and I fed it. And the more I fed it, the deeper it went inside of me, the deeper it went. And it got to the point where I was no, listen, I was no longer bitter with the people, let me know. I was no longer bitter with persons. My bitterness started to go straight towards God. My bitterness went direct. I was me, 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 take up my love self, but me, I got bitter towards God. I was bitter. I was bitter, and I wanted to deny it, and I wanted to deny it, but I was bitter, and I was saying, God, I do my favorite, man. Yeah, man. Them are your favorite, because them can do this and them can get away with it. And me, I forbid the one for come back and apologize. So what? I don't have feelings too. So what? My feelings don't matter too. What a problem. 
what 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 happened to me that like at this time you reach you know, like out of the proper proper out of the flap in a god face and everything and i cried i cried and listen i have never ever 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 had a suicidal thought ever but during that time of my bitterness i wanted to kill myself i wanted to kill myself i just my just say you know what me i got my grave with this coming not tell nobody sorry me not do it that's where i was and god said to me say all right make me see who better now let me see if are you run things or am you run things let me see if you're going to choose how you look over being healed let me see if you're going to choose how people see you over my glory let me see what you're going to choose and i ball i bald i put on a proper wailing <laughs> i cried and i repented I repented. I repented. And because I experienced something like that, I I want you guys to really look in on yourself. You see, people refuse to forgive, not because of the hurt, you know. It's not so much about the hurt. It's not even so much about how they feel, why people refuse to forgive. You know, people refuse to give because of how they're going to look. Because they are worried that people might say, Watch the fool, yeah. Me, if I did me, any how I did me, me wouldn't allow it. I would not forgive nobody any of me I should have me. Like that's that's what they are worried about. They are worried about what people are going to say about them. And so they choose to hold on. And someone sometimes what we don't understand is that people who have who have hurt us, people who have sinned against us, people who you know cause us some form of pain. We don't know that we don't know what they're going through after they have done something like that, you know. We don't know that these these people would die to hear us say that listen, I forgive you. We don't know that people would have just they would just want us to come and say, Listen, I'm forgiving you know? that that would mean the world to them. And I believe that this is the reason why Jesus really expound on it i think this is the reason why jesus really did a push it push it push it why he said that um we're supposed to forgive 70 times 7 a day for 490 times a day because of the power of forgiveness and listen man he demonstrated it well he demonstrated it very well jesus come and him no say them are gonna beat him. He knew. He him no said them that I go spit in him face. Him no said them that I go give him vinegar for drink. He knew. Jesus, when Jesus come, him no say people like call me. I go give him big problems. <laughs> him no say people like me. I go make him really probably sit down and think. I say yo, general star. What am I gonna do with that little girl? Yeah, you know what? he knew and he still died for me he still died for Ryan. he still died for you guys that are watching and that's the that, listen man that's the power of forgiveness when we remember all that we have done when we remember some other thoughts because sometimes we don't really do things you know sometimes other thoughts and that we entertain because enough people me kill already in my head you know i've killed so many people in my mind I mean, literally kill them, you know, but because you're doing it in your mind, it's still wrong. And 
Jesus forgave me. He shed his blood very rich like me. And we have to remember that, that we need forgiveness too. We really need forgiveness too. You guys know the you guys know the parable. It's Matthew 18 verse verses 21 to 35 when one of the king's servants uh he owed the king 10,000 10, shekels pence 10,000 in our money. I don't remember what exact currency, but he owed the king $10,000 basically. And he couldn't pay the king. And the king say, sell him and him wife and him pitney them, sell everything that he owns. And in bed, the king said, king, please don't kill me, please. King, don't sell me things. And the king said, all right, then fine. It's okay. I'm going to be patient with you. You're off the hook, basically. And then now, uh, Mr. Sir, I have a servant and his servant owe him. Hundred dollar, or a thousand dollar. Hundred, I think it's a hundred dollars. Yes, you see the difference. He he owed the king ten thousand dollar now, and his servant owed him a hundred dollars. And him him grab him and say, "Boy, I want my money, I want my money." And him servant say, "Oh, please, please be patient with me. I will get you your money." And him say, "No, I'm gonna want to hear that. Buff, 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 man, lock him up." And then when, when the king heard that, when the Lord heard that, he called him and say, hey, look how much money you owe me and I was patient with you. Why didn't you show that same level of patience? Why didn't you show that same level of grace? And he just do away with him. And it's the same thing with us. We need it. We need forgiveness too. We need to remember that. Because, all right, Somebody might box you. And you remember how much people you boxing on. You, know? <laughs> you just have to think about the one box where you get. You don't remember how much people you box. Somebody might hurt you and you don't remember how much people you hurt. You just feel like so you're hurt more significant and you just want to hold on to this like a gold medal and walk around with it like it's a medal of honor. Listen to me. Your hurt is not a medal of honor. Yes, what you have overcome is your testimony, but it's not a medal of honor. It's not something to brag about. It's not something to walk around and try to prove, say, hey, you hurt me, so may I go show you some better than you and everything where you say may I go become, may I go work for the rest of my life for I reach there. And then when you work towards proving your proving yourself to people, you end up doing what they are doing. You end up doing what they did to you. For, listen. You see, when somebody hurts you, it's like a cut. Right? If I get a, if I get a cut it and in a dress the cut. Right? Or a store. I in a dress it. And you make dirt catch it, that I'm more hurt. You make the all kind of something catch it. Basically, you leave it out and it starts to fester. And then, no, say so you just put one little band aid over it. You know, do not, you know, you just throw one little band aid over it because you're trying, you're trying to cover it. You're not, you know, you're not putting an alcohol on it, you're not putting a peroxide, purple lotion. You know, all of the something that my grandmother used to just cut with. Yeah. You're not putting none of that on it. You just throw some over it for cover it up. What do you think is going to happen? Most naturally, it's going to just start to fester and it's going to become something worse. It's going to become, it's going to become something where you need more of a medical attention. And that's what offense and unforgiveness is like. When someone hurts you, you don't cover it up. Listen. They have this talk we say fake it until you make it. Hello, don't fake it. Cause you're not gonna make it. Don't fake it because you are not going to make it. Address 
the hurt. Address it. The Bible says that when your brother sin against you, go go tell him. Go and tell him. Say, hey, you know, say you sin against me. And, and, because we're always, we're always trying to contact scriptures for, for please ourselves. Because, you know, people always say, what if somebody sin? Because, you know, Jesus said to forgive them 70 times, seven times, which is 490. So they say, what if somebody sin against me 490 one time? Then can I do something? No. And it's the same thing for the scripture that says, um, let it be known that he has offended you. Because it says that if, if you tell him and he's not here, you have to carry two persons with him, two persons with you, and you tell him again, and if he's still not here, you carry him in front of the whole church, and you tell him again, and if he's still not here, then he shall be a he. Then listen to me, all if he's not here, even if he does not hear, it is still your duty to forgive. It is still your duty to forgive that person. What listen, what if what if somebody decides that they're not gonna ever tell you that I'm sorry? Because there are people who who are wait is that there are people who can only forgive if someone says that they're sorry. That's the way that you think you're already defeated. That's the way that you see forgiveness. You're already defeated. You can't wait upon people for telling sorry. What if somebody, what if somebody hurt you today and dead tomorrow? What, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Guys, it don't work it. Holding on to grudges holding on to her, it's not worth it. Because in the end, you will lose. In the end, it's your peace that is being robbed. Hey, let me share something with you guys. Because I can't, I can't share everything out of wisdom. There are certain things that I can't put on the media, but there are certain things that the Lord has um, allowed me to. Um, my dad... My dad was um my dad was overseas and my brother wasn't at the house, right? And I was living with my uncle at the time. During that time Javon and I were dating, but you know, in the day with my everything. So I was in, I was at the house with my uncle and I don't remember what happened, but me and Matt this has since my Christian, you know, since I'm a Christian. And I don't remember what started it, but my uncle and I, we got in an argument, right? We were going back and forth, back and forth. Then, lo and behold, he start lit me, basically. And he have me up in a wall, and he might choke me like he might kill me. And me I fight back. And my phone my phone screen was shattered i was on the phone my mom at the time actually so my mom was in canada at the time so i was i was at a house alone pretty much and my phone screen was shattered and like my mom my mom she heard the argument and she was on the phone and she was screaming and she scream and she scream and she scream and she when when i spoke to her about it like since i got here she was telling me everything she said, God, please, mama, fly. God, please, please, mama, fly. Because me got kill him. I got kill him. My mother was upset. So after everything, I I left the house and I went up to Javon and I told him, I'm going to call him father. I'm But long story short, I was upset. I was upset. I was upset. But upset because me say, how dare you put your hands on me? Right? I'm not your child. How dare you? I was pissed. And I held on to it. I held on to it. I called Uncle Musa. I called Pastor Lenga. I said, Daddy, this go on in a hand. I don't know how it's going to go. If you're going to keep me up for the praise of worship team, just take me up because I'm not letting it go. <laughs> I'm not letting it go. That's where I was. I was upset. And then there was this one night when Uncle Musa was preaching. I think it was, it was watch night service, actually. And the Lord released a word and said, Forgive everyone that hurt you. 
I don't remember the word quite, but that's exactly, that's basically what we're saying. And I was hesitant at first. And then I was like, you know what? This is not worth it. This is not worth my relationship with God. This this don't work me going forward. This don't this not gonna stop me from progressing. And so I called him and I I told him that I forgive him and he apologized. Said speed, he apologized and him to say, Yo, I'm I'm happy and I'm glad that this is I, I'm glad that we can look past things. And I came back inside and I don't know if Pastor Link pick up, but my just ear and ball up one big hallelujah. And then he looked at me and he smiled and he said, good going, daughter. And I felt good. And I let it go. Listen, you can't, it, guys, don't, don't allow, don't allow this thing. Don't allow bitterness, don't allow unforgiveness to hold you back. Because it's heavy now. It is heavy. It come like you draw one big heavy bag bear now. When you have up all these things in your heart, it's not worth it. It's not hurt it. It's not worth it. Listen, people hurt you without realizing. People hurt you without realizing. And people hurt you because they want to hurt you, you know. But you have to you have to be the one to choose to forgive. You have to be the one to choose to forgive. Guys. Think about it. Just stop and think about this. Think about your your reason for going to hell is because you chose not to let go something. Just stop and think about it. You refuse to forgive. You refuse to show someone mercy and kindness. And that Senegal El. That you know? Senegal El. No, seriously. Stop and think. Just take this time and think about that. You think it's worth it? You think it's worth it? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Hey, I don't know if you guys know this, but unforgiveness can affect your body too, you know. It can affect your body too. It affects mine. Or it affected mine. It affected mine. Uh I was whenever I whenever I decide to hold on to something, my heart hurts. My heart hurts me literally and the whole of the top part of my abdomen hurt me whenever I decide that I'm going to hold on to something. I know somebody that had a heart condition because he was unforgiving. Serious, serious heart condition because he experienced a level of hurt when just don't believe them deserve it and him will learn to it and it affected his heart drastically. In the dead, you know, he might work on it. In the dead, him good. He's working on it. Guys, it don't worth it. It don't worth it. <laughs> it's not worth it. Oh, yes. Um when I looked at the so funny enough, right? Um when I saw the flyer, I was looking at the flyer and I was look, I was just examining the flyer and everything. And I said, why Ryan put my head between the words? Like him, I try to make everybody see some head big. I say, right now, trying to make everybody see my head big. Why am I head after the between the words? And that is when the Holy Spirit said to me, because he had to do that. I don't know if you, right? I don't know if you know what he had to do. But the Holy Spirit said to me that 
you had to do that because forgiveness starts here. Forgiveness starts yeah. here. You have to. You That's right. have to have a made of mind when you decide to forgive somebody. The Bible tells us that the enemy is an accuser of a brethren. Right when you decide that so you are gonna forgive somebody, you might gonna start reminding you of all that the person has done to you. He's going to remind you of what you have been through. He's going to remind you where you go through during that process. He's going to keep reminding you. But you have to make up in your mind. You have to make up in your mind and listen. This person don't work my relationship with God. This person don't work me going forward. This person is not worth it. It starts here, guys. And be not yeah, deceived. Does. God is not mocked. Because sometimes I walk around and I say, Oh, I forgive them. I forgive them. Oh, I'm let it go. I'm let it go a long time. Yep. But when you talk about it, you talk about it, that's it. Really it like just happened. Whenever you share the experience, you share it as if it just happened to you. You have not forgiven them. Mm -hmm. If when you see somebody will hurt you and you're a few failure at like it skip a beat a little, you have not forgiven them. Yeah, I'm going I'm going there because that happened to me a lot. I I faked it. I told myself that hey, mm -hmm. forgive them because I thought that if I speak, my dad, speak it, it would have happened. No. No. You're talking, you we say we forgive them, we say we forgive them, but every time we speak about it, we speak like it just happened. Whenever we see them, we entire mood change, our hearts keep a beat, we just feel like something turning our heart. You know that you truly forgive someone when you're sharing your testimony of your hurt and your aim is to protect that person more than yourself. That's how you know that you have truly forgiven somebody. When your aim is to mm -hmm. cover That's that person one. in love. In love. Remembering that, hey, they are humans too. They make mistakes too. I have hurt people too. And I wouldn't want anyone to put me on blast because I'm truly sorry. Your aim is to protect them or to cover them. Because we have to share our testimonies. It's inevitable. The word of God says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimonies. We have to share it. But if you're sharing your testimony to put somebody on blast, shut up. Plain and mm -hmm. straight. Just be quiet. Just be quiet. Just be quiet. You have to cover that person. God say, if you're your brother at fall, come off the altar and go make amends with them. Put on your testimony and go make amends with them and then you come and share it. Put on your offering and go make amends with them and then you come and share it. Put on the word where you go preach, go make amends with them and then you come and share it. That's the importance of it. That's the importance yeah. of forgiveness. You guys have and a lot of people do that. A lot of people do that. It's, listen, man, it's... I know it's hard. I know that... As myself, sometimes you feel like you don't deserve it. Sometimes you feel like people have been unfair to you. Sometimes you feel like, yo, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this. But the truth of the matter is Jesus didn't deserve it. Jesus didn't deserve it, man. And when he was dying, he said, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Sometimes people don't know what they're doing. Joseph's brothers did not know what they were doing. They did not know what they were doing. They just did it because of how they felt. And in the end, if Joseph can look and feel better them and forgive them. Because what his brothers did was horrible. It was straight up horrible. And he forgave them. 
because he understood that listen what you guys did even though you meant it for evil god turned it around for good if you guys didn't do this i wouldn't be here hey if some people never hurt you you know yep. you wouldn't be you wouldn't be where you are now if i didn't <laughs> if me never get hurt i couldn't have been here telling you guys That's that hey true. you can do it i wouldn't be here telling you guys that hey it's possible it's not worth it these things push us into our destiny these things happen to us so that we can help other people and we just have to look at it like that we just have to remember that hey it's gonna happen it's gonna happen people are gonna hurt you there's no escaping it there's no escaping it as i said people hurt you without even knowing there's no escaping it but it's all up to you it's all up to you to yes, that's it. a good point. it's all up to you to just say hey it's all right it's all right and i don't have it all figured out mark you i don't because there are times when you know things hurt me and i hold on to it but i don't hold on to it as long as i usually would so you know may i get look i'm getting may i work for it it's a daily task it's something that you have to do daily it's like repentance yeah it's like repentance you have to forgive daily you have to forgive you have to forgive hey jesus said forgive 40, 490 times a day we have 24 hours in a day if it was for forgive every hour we have a couple more left. You get what I'm saying? A couple more forgiveness left. You don't understand what I'm saying? So, guys, yeah, just, just you know, work on it. Another thing I wanted to share. Um, I don't know if you guys know. You guys must know Minister Lane, Shai Galing. She has her program where she's. Um, the virtuous kingdom women program where she has women and to help them empower them or whatever and i was on it on wednesday and she was talking about something and she said um it, like somebody would say something to you and it reminds you of the past and you just go off you just go off and when she said that i froze when she said that i froze because that same day, husband came home and, like he said, basic food and done cook earlier or whatever. Because I I'm really cook later today. So basic food and done cook earlier. I'ma just lose it. Let me say, yo, every other day, I was saying like every other day, we cook, and <laughs> every other day, we cook when you come when you get it early, you get it to eat early, and you know you're not for weight. So the one little day we want to cook early, I said this and I was upset and I felt so offended and I was like, oh my goodness, you're not nice to me, you're me, you know, I don't have to hold tantrum and everything. And the night when I was on the when I was on the Zoom and I, I heard when this, I heard that she said that, I heard Mummy Link say that. I'm gonna say, hey, you know that when I was younger. My father used to always do that to me. Like, if I my, if my clean the house, and now I say it, you know, but one day when I clean the house, yo, my girl, you can't clean the house. You know what? And him just go on and him just go on. And if I cook every day, you know, say, and one day when I cook, yo, you can't cook some food, I should play there. You know, him just go on. And then, like, when, when, when Jawan did that, I was like, <sighs> And I was upset. And then that's when I realized that I'm gonna deal with that yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's when I realized that I'm gonna deal with it. So I'm gonna deal with it yet. <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> guys, we have to really search our hearts. <laughs> We have to really search our hearts. We have to search our hearts because there are some things that we are carrying from our past that we haven't dealt with. And we have to deal with it. We ignore it because we think that we have it under control. Yeah. We neglect it. 
because we think that hey oh a long time that that not bother me but listen man that little spark of feeling that little spark of feeling that you're feeling whenever something comes up that reminds you of it shows that you have not dealt with it you have to deal with it these things will eventually come back and grow a tree in our lives they're like seeds basically and have the seed there when I root it up when I dig it up and then one big tree just start growing and over your head and it's like yeah so where did this come from where did this come from and then by the time when you really realize where it come from it becomes harder to deal with don't wait until it becomes harder guys look at it now look for them now search with your heart now as I said, there are people here. You might have been raped. I don't know what it is like, but I will never disregard your emotions towards that. There are people here. Um, family members might have molested you. Um, one of your ex them might have broke your heart. Um, any the church people might hurt you. Pastor, prophetess, deacon, deaconess, usher. They might, they might have hurt you. Deal with it. I know of people who are suffering dearly right now because they, they have not dealt with what they think that they didn't need to deal with. Deal with it. Don't cover it up. Don't cover it up. Listen. Don't cover it up under your tongues. Do not cover it up under your lengthy intercessions. Do not cover it up hmm? under how many Tell them again. you know. Do not cover it up under your hat and your long skirts. Do not cover it up under your praise and worship and your anointed singing. Don't cover it up because you can be there mm -hmm. I am prophesying I am prophesying you can be there I ask you where they not drop a gun I am prophesying I lick every nail from the head and you are unforgiving because the gifts are without repentance be not deceived the Bible says that the gifts are without repentance it can sing a heaven glory come right down in the church you can preach and then when you're done preach the whole congregation come up at the altar and deliver and some people drop down and vomit and demon come out and praise the lord hallelujah and rub up a shut up all of that can happen and you have bitterness in your heart just like i hit the field just like i hit the field when him talk it come like i got himself attack and that man was filled with bitterness Pastor Lang always said, don't make the signs sign you. Pastor Lang said, don't make the signs sign you. Don't make your gifts make you feel like you're there. Never allow your gifts to make you feel like you are there and your heart is not good. Your heart is bitter. It's a dangerous place to be, guys. Because when I was bitter, I was singing. And I was singing. Hallelujah, I'm a singer, I'm a worshiping a man. I may testify, I may encourage people, but my heart was dirty. My heart was bitter till I couldn't hide it anymore. I left church one day and go up a up and go ball. Nobody don't know my day. Go up a up and go ball. Ball, even now, I couldn't cover it no more. It started peeing me, chest, everything, shot a breath. Headache, migraines, heart that hurt me, and I was just weeping. I couldn't hide it anymore. People cover up things very easily. You have people who are good at masking their hurt. Do not, do not do it, guys. Because unforgiveness is dangerous. It's very dangerous. It is very there's something as simple as that. It is very dangerous. And 
sometimes people come and and they're demon possessed most times it's not because no one is doing anything to them it's because they refuse to forgive that gives demons entry and a gateway and an open door to interfere with their lives to interfere with their finances to interfere with their mind their schooling their ministry all that you could possibly think of that the lord has blessed you with yeah unforgiveness causes demons to come in and mess you up big time i live that i had to deal with that so i can tell you guys it's not something to play with it is not something to ignore. It's not. It's not. It's not worth it, guys. It's not worth it. Work on it. Work on it. And Shanti, let me make an input right here. Um, you see. A lot of times we, we speak about, you know, or most of the time when we speak about forgiveness, you know, we will say, you know, it's that person, you know, that person hurt me, that person did this, mm -hmm. they did that. But then if we really look, listen, we have to take responsibility now. This is where we have to take responsibility. Like sit back yeah, and just be honest with yourself. You yeah. know, what is it that I, what is it that I did that would contribute to whatever happened? To the situation exactly. what is it that i do because a lot of times we don't want to take responsibility for hurting people yes so we will blame them with all type of scenarios like oh you did this and you're the reason that this happened yeah. and we like we don't know say it was our fault exactly so can we like take full responsibility to say you know what i was the problem for this i was the cause for this so let me you know handle let me deal with it let me apologize yes. and that is something that a lot of us struggle with we don't want to apologize yes. because even as you said we want to apologize because you know if you apologize people are going to say what's well, up the mother say oh i eat that, that. Mm -hmm. you get me mm -hmm. so it's not about that if we want to go if we want we want to go we have to learn to forgive exactly. we have to learn to take full responsibility for the the you know i mean every action it has a consequence when we really sit down as mature young adults too yeah we know that we know when we do something wrong we know when it hurts someone and though we can't control someone's action we must not as a matter the fact we shouldn't control someone's action even if you can because one that is manipulation yes and yes. if you're going to manipulate someone so that they can be on your side yeah it's not you're not supposed to be in that are at all yes understand so let us take responsibility for our actions if you know that you hurt someone i think tonight after all of this tonight have someone to go to and apologize yeah. to them probably god, god is probably speaking to someone now and you know he's probably bringing up a situation and say you remember when you did that yeah and you know it was right i was speaking to, to you i was telling you not to do this but you still went on and you did it yeah and it hurt the person and you walk off with it god is reminding you tonight that whoever it is you have so after this you have someone to go and apologize yeah because you can't move on with 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 people you know that pass and you know that they're there i'm sorry it's okay and i've learned that you know some yeah, my pastor he like he always said to me that you know just a simple i'm sorry that can fix a lot of things but we just don't want to do it because we don't want to to say oh i'm sorry and it's going to make you you know yeah and honestly if some if i if i if i um but then if i went to someone and i said i'm sorry I'm, i remember a situation last year when i was in um an argument with someone 
And when I told them, I'm sorry, I don't want your nothing. I was like, Lord, 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 Lord. But then, if you respond to that person in a negative way, and you're going to say, oh, that's why I should have told you then. Sorry, it's not meant. Better energize in the first place, because then you really don't mean it. You really don't mean yeah. it. Because if you're going, if I tell you, um, Shanti, I'm sorry. And then when you re respond to me and say, don't tell me I'm sorry, don't, don't talk to me, not, yeah. just leave me alone. And I'm, I'm going to respond to you and, talk and say, I'm sure I'm sure to come to you. That is why what happened, yeah. happened. Understand? Let us take full responsibility. Shanti, continue. Yeah. Um, continue and, and, what, and what afterwards, let, let me. It's, Let me go it's back. true. It's so true. If somebody's response to your apology is not what you expected, and then your response is, "Oh, should I never?" That's why I'm gonna chat to people. Mm -hmm, you never mean it. I gotta show you, so I never mean it. <laughs> but yes, guys. Um, two things before I end. Um, first thing is that back back to I hate to feel. David never do I to feel not you know. David did not hurt I to feel. David did not do anything mm -hmm. to I to feel. You know who David do something to? I to feel his granddaughter and I to feel his grandson in law. Because Bathsheba is I to feel his grandfather Bathsheba is I to feel his grandfather. And Uriah, I am grandson in law. You know David, sex Bathsheba, kill her for husband. Sometimes we take up people, we take up people's hurt for our enough self. The person directly, the person did directly hurt us, mm -hmm. but they hurt someone that's close to us. So we gonna take it up now for ourselves and I carry somebody else's offense up. where. No, I'm not for do with we. Hello, listen to me, man. Guys, don't do it. <laughs> I, all right, see, the God had to, the Lord had to talk to me about that too. Because, you see, when it comes down to my husband and when it comes down to my best friend, if you hurt them, it's like a cheap leak, if I should be honest. A cheap leak. I get that. And, I have to be careful. Guys, we have to be careful when someone that's close to us and somebody hurts somebody that was close to us. We have to be careful where we hold that person accountable and not join them in it. We have to remind them that hey guys, Hi. listen, you can't don't don't react like that. But what I usually do. What I usually do, when they say, no, no, it's not going to work, it's not going to work, I'm going to start for my lines with them, and we just go head on. God had to talk to me about that. Just right when I was looking mm -hmm. into the scripture, he had to speak to me about that, and he had to say, hey, 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 you, back up, back up. This has nothing to do with you. Ease out. This has nothing to do with you. And that's what we do sometimes. We take our people's problems from our head, and we put ourselves in trouble with God. We put ourselves in trouble with God because I feel I plot differently against David, differently want to kill him. And when his counsel was not followed, he realized same now get a revenge way more and then go and go kill himself. Foolishness. Foolishness. And this is what I'm going to. Leave with you guys. Um, she's on. It gone. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. It gone. Get it back. Get it back. Oh. Get it back. Drink some water. <laughs> yeah, I need some water. I'm gonna drink for two. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yes. I guess I just found it in the water while I go. Hey, here's what you guys need to understand. 
You see? A person who barely knows the Bible. A person that can barely pray. A person that can barely prophesy, barely see in the spirit, but has a heart, has a forgiving heart, is more powerful than a person who know the Bible from the cover to the cover. We can pray and angel come down and do all kind of person that has a forgiving heart but the person that barely knows the bible and has a forgiving heart is more powerful than a person who know the bible and unforgiving god because it, it having a forgiving heart is driven by love yeah having a forgiving heart is driven by love and guys i know as my same no it's not easy i know i know but you guys have to make up your mind that hey i am going to do with this we have to make up our minds that hey i have to do this i have to do this i have we have to do it guys we're happy we're happy you know what i say you know me saying me saying this to you guys and you guys receiving this anyway let us come head on head on head on head on you know what i say eh? that you preach all right I'm gonna see if I can call it a word. I got your preach. All right. Hold this. Take this. Hold this. Take this. You boy, Raheem. Boy, I bring on people. Hold this. Yeah. Take this. Deal with this. That's what, and then we have to remember. We have to remember. We have to remember. So, guys, apply the scriptures. Don't just read it. Don't just read it. Oh, forgive. Seven times seven a day. Oh, all of the forgiveness scriptures then don't just read it you have to apply it you have to constantly seek god on behalf of the issues that you have the hurt that you're carrying you have to constantly seek the lord and if you may as i say it starts here this is where it starts in your mind you have to make up your mind and when your mind is made up then you go from there and no matter what come no matter how you feel keep that made up mind keep that made up man because i'm at a place right now where i can talk about these things mm -hmm. and i'm good i can talk about the things that i've experienced and i'm good sometimes i don't remember it <laughs> sometimes i don't even want to remember not because i've hurt or anything just that I just see yeah. the persons differently. It's like, you know, man, I want to see them like, oh, how could you do this to me? Man, mm -mm. man, man I want to see them like that. Man, I want to remember the hurt. Mm -hmm. I just want to love them and make it known every day. Say, hey, I love you. I mean, I feel, we, we have to get up here so when I feel nothing. I mean, I remember it unless God want me to talk about it. Because most of the things I'm going to bring up since night, I didn't even remember it until my start ask God room for talk about pretty much and there's a lot more there's a whole lot more but i think you guys get the point i do believe that you guys have gotten the point and i do hope that hey you guys will just take this word and just apply so that mm -hmm. god can be glorified you guys can help somebody else and say hey listen i've experienced this and i overcame it thanks be to god because honestly, if it's the fun of God, I couldn't be here saying this to you guys. So remember that, listen, this is God. God God spoke. God was the one to talk to you tonight. God is the one we're going to talk to you after this. He's going to continue reminding you guys about forgiving and being forgiving. So I hope that, you know, me being on here, <clears throat> me being available to the will of the Lord has helped someone tonight to just you know do the right thing you know the right thing and guys i just hope you have a good yes. night and no, no. just just, just, <laughs> just love if you have somebody um, where you need to apologize to go apologize to them if you have somebody where you forgot to the lord book go on to the lord he's waiting he's been waiting and just do the right thing 
but that's my piece for the night. <laughs> Amen. Um, before we close off, I have some points for for you guys. Um, no, we we used to let go, right? Yeah. Um, you have a choice. You have a choice, and what when you do have a choice, you you don't have to um explain. You know everything. You, you don't have to explain why is it that you, you know you did what it. Uh, the situation, what, what what happened, how it happened. You don't necessarily have to do that. Yeah. You don't have to be um, haunted by that. All right? Yeah. So, you know, if you're going to apologize, to explain. It's not, a ne it's not necessary for you to explain. You know, unless it, you, you want to give some clarity, fine. But you don't have to. You just have to learn how to just um, apologize and all right yeah no if the person that you're going to apologize to if that person you know they don't accept the apology you need to just know that whatever you said whatever you um explain to them it was sincere if they gave attitude okay you just need to know that your heart is clear yeah. you just need to all of what you said you got, you got it off your mind because you don't want to be haunted by these things. I remember going to someone a couple uh, months ago, and it was an, um, a high school. And I remember that I did something in high school that hurt the person because I was, I was I mean, I, I remember that for some, somehow because, you know, when you're sitting down and you're reevaluating some stuff that you did and you're like, was I really um right with what i did and then i remember that for some reason it just came up back to me and i was like you know i need yeah. somehow i just need to find that person and i need to apologize to them because you know that the words the words words they leave yeah, a scar words some words they damage they people and i found that friend and i was like you know i need to talk to you and honestly that person we we should not even remember because it was just year it's years so i mean she definitely i think she definitely forgot about that um, you know when i brought up about the situation i was like you know i'm sorry for doing this i'm sorry for saying this to you yeah. and i apologize and immediately we started speaking and funny enough she was saved which is good yeah. and uh, she so she never responded in a particular manner that would you know leave it to feel bad and say boy I really regret doing that and do I still do regret it? I have come to terms with it. And you know, I've said, you know, that'd be the glory because at the end of the day, now I can say, all right then, that in the past, I made peace with my past. So yes, I'm sorry. And you know, though it, it's hard to say sometimes, especially when you know how the person will, re, um, will react, yeah. it's best to say. <laughs> And I've seen this thing where a lot of young, a lot of young people, they're like, "Oh, me, I'm going to get you back." Yeah. And it doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter how long it takes, and one way or other. No, listen. First of all, um, children are God. Save or unsafe, it does not matter. Worse to save people, then we're supposed to know how to keep on a safe. Go um, ahead. Uh, um, guys, also forgive yourselves. Um, I know sometimes we made decisions that we regret. Uh, there are people who are growing now that they regret not finishing, they regret not going to school when their parents tell them to go to school and now they're in a position where they're unable to better themselves educational wise yeah. we have made some decisions that has really affected us you guys have made decisions that has really affected you and has haunted you for years yes. but listen you have to forgive yourself it's okay you didn't know if you did know so this would have been 
the outcome, I'm sure you wouldn't have done it. You didn't know you made a mistake. Don't live in regret. Don't live in regret, guys. Don't live in regret. Just seek to move forward from it. Seek to be better from it. Don't hold on to it. Forgive yourselves. When you come up, it's there just looking at the mirror and say, and say, I forgive myself. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you, Shante. I forgive you. You know, you were young. You were unwise. Mm -hmm. You made a foolish decision. But it's okay. Forgive yourself. That will really help you to go forward. Because sometimes it's not people that they don't forgive it's themselves. But forgive yourself. And you will go forward. Yeah, that's it, bro. Yes, absolutely. Right. And, you know, when we say, oh, you hurt me, so I'm definitely going to hurt you back, it shows that you're still holding on to the past and shows that you're, you're still not mature enough to handle a certain situation. To say, okay, then, you know, yeah. they hurt me. You really sit down and think and say, okay, at some point I'm going to have to forgive this person because you can't always live, um, live like whatever is whatever and hurt anybody, go around and hurt anybody and stop hurting people because of what people in the past did to you. Yeah. So yeah. That's not, listen. Mm -mm. Not because of what someone did in the past means they're going to like just throw everything down on them. That's exactly. not right. That's not right. You can't do that. Don't go around hurting people, hurting people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Um, saying because the topic is forgiveness. Right? That's that the, the nowhere in this life that could be right. You yeah. can't just get up hurting people, hurting people. And a lot of times you know you know that you're doing it. Yeah do it on purpose yes so when you know when it when the time comes around and the person you, you go to the person to apologize when you really realize what what you did and how it re really affected the person and you go to the person and you know you're apologizing mm -hmm. it's not going to seem sincere exactly it's not going to seem sincere because you go to the person while you were doing what you're doing oh you were having fun oh i'm, I'm and and then you hurt the people that are there for you you hurt the people that are looking out for you and a lot of times when we do it a lot of times we end up regretting that yeah. and why we regret it because we realize that the people that, that we hurt one it might have been our destiny helper um two it might have been someone um both both ways they destiny helper or you could have been their destiny yeah. helper if you've handled it true i know that in the past a lot of us we've done some very messy things and though we can't it gives us no right to continue doing what we're doing it gives us no right it gives us no freedom to go around hurting people that you know they they, they did not contribute at all to whatever it is that you are going through yeah so it gives you no right what to be doing that stop going on hurting people life and you're that person it hurt or take it suck it up and get it right yes. stop going around hurting people because of what someone did to you yes stop bleeping people whenever cut you this is not anything that i'm going to say oh karma no no we, we don't deal with karma around here we deal with whatever you do it's going to come back around yeah, you, you, to haunt you, you if you messed up someone. One way or the other. One way or the other, it's going to come back and haunt you. Yeah. Stop. When hurting people. Shani said hurting people hurt people. Hurt people. Yeah. Yes, and you need to get your healing. That's so true. You need to get your healing. You need to stop doing that. And as, as, as I said, take responsibility Sainka said um truth is 
Though letting go of hurt can be so difficult, maturity can help, but it's something we have to call ourselves out on to really forgive. Exactly. Exactly. I agree. Because when, I do you, agree. when you hide these um, things, um, while letting go is difficult up, for real, um, we have to be ready. When you hide, to when, you, when you hide it, when you when you cover it up and you have it in the dark, it gives the enemy more time to play on it. Because we know Satan of darkness. He likes darkness. So when it's hidden, him just a play upon it and him just a, him just yeah. a feed on it. When you expose it now, you expose it in the light now, you call yourself out on it. It it, it encourages you to deal with it, encourages you to get it fixed. So you are so right. You are so right. That's where it starts. It starts. Yeah. That's, that's exactly where it starts. You make up your mind, say, hey, I got to do this. May I call myself on this. That's where it starts. Absolutely. Um, I wrote something. Um, I think it's sometime in the week. I don't need to get in that detail, but sometime in the week. Um, let me let me see if I can get it right here. Yeah. So, how is it that you know we want forgiveness from God, but we find it so hard to forgive someone? How that works? I don't see I don't see that working. And as soon as we do something and as soon as we need God to step in, we run to God, God forgive me, God forgive me, God forgive me. But when someone hurts you and they came back to apologizing, you push them off and oh, I don't want anything from you. Yeah. Think about it. What if God was supposed to deal with you the same way you dealt with that person? Would you be comfortable with that? Exactly. And let me take it from from a from the perspective of not being in church. If you hurt someone, um, in particular, I say say I hurt you, Shanti, mm -hmm. and when I hurt you, you you know it broke you, it pushed you in depression, and like like it yeah. just damaged you, right? No, I when I was doing what I was doing. I had no no emotions towards you. I did not hear. about what I did because I was I, I saw it. I was doing it wasn't really anything you know to affect. So oh, and before I even continue on that, let let me just say this tonight. Stop saying that people are too sensitive towards something. Everybody feel stuff differently. So. The way how I hurt, that's not the way how that probably what hurt me, it's not going to hurt. Isn't it? Right? So I don't see how yeah. me that I'm sensitive. I'm not too sensitive. It's just you need to take the time to understand what exactly, why what happened, you know, why it hurt me. And we don't talk about these things. Yeah. We don't oh we don't want to talk about it because oh why well, we don't want to talk about it feel as if when we talk about it, it's there's there's not going to be any change yeah. or anything. Sainka said, I realized that communicating with someone, especially the one who caused the hurt, really yes, helps. It does, it does help. That's the word I've it does help because someone came me um last I think last month or about which month you know because I'm not even keeping up <laughs> with, with the date. We're in May. Right, me. I think someone came to me in February, and that person came to me and you know they, said, you know, I've forgiven you for what you did. And out of the blue, they just came to me and said that out of nowhere, I forgive you. And I'm like, what do you forgive me for? Because I don't know what I did. And the person, uh, when I said that, the person explained yeah. what happened. I'm like, I I did not know this. I did not yeah. know this, or I would have apologized. So a lot of times we say someone hurt us, but have you really said, you know, like have you said, you know, that you hurt me? Exactly. People can't read mine. <laughs> People cannot read mine. If someone hurt you, mention it. You mention it. You can't just go around malicing people. Oh, you hurt. So I'm just going to cast your way and turn and get be behind me. You have to talk about these are things you have to talk about. No one will know that you 
you hurt them yeah unless you see i mean there are situations that you will know but sometimes you just definitely have to say you know what you did i did not like it it is as simple as that we have to learn how to communicate and i'm learning that you know we have to learn how to communicate and shante if if you hurt me um with something right how are you going to know if i don't exactly. tell you because i'm in my head in my head i'm going to say oh that's not nothing to hurt over because i would not be hurt over that. so obviously she, she could never be hurt over that and that's how a lot of us yeah. look at those things that is why a lot of us look at those things oh because it wouldn't hurt me because it exactly. doesn't hurt me and hurt you it just definitely can't that's true bro. how people do it shanty it can't ask me no rain I, I don't know how people look at things like that i don't know i don't know um yes Shani said that's true but sometimes they know and they do know and they just don't want to apologize and, that, and that's, because, thing, that's oh, what i said i don't know if Shani was on earlier they must say oh but that's what i was saying mm -hmm. what if what if that person chooses not to apologize are you going to hold on to it no what are you going to do that's a good question that is a very good question what exactly what um Sainka said reconciliation is the best i'm still recovering from a lot of hurt i don't have them up but deep down the issues still lingers i realized though that interacting with the people rebuilds the relationship and it does and to be honest, um some persons when we hurt them and you know some most times the bonds that we had before yeah. it, it just Not there again. cut yeah broken gone and sometimes some things happen and we just have to learn how to let it go walk away and move on yeah and i how i look at it now if i lose a connection and i i will sit down and i will look and i will say was this relationship was this friendship how was this affecting me was this really helping me to grow yeah. what was this doing how was this contributing to my life and, and then i would say oh if you weren't putting anything in particular to help me to grow then no i'm going to believe that I cut this connection for a specific reason mm -hmm. and there's no there would be no 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 need for me to go and run back to so not all times i would say going back to that person to build a relay it can be it can be strictly um just oh hi bye but you know that that level of friendship or relationship that you have with the person you, you really you really don't need it because at the end of the day you don't want to you know go yeah, I was <laughs> go finish. ahead guys yes um, okay. and that's often a question that people ask yes. be my they, guess when they entertain them on forgiveness they ask oh so forgiving them means that i have to talk back to them um you don't necessarily have to talk back you don't you don't necessarily have nope. to talk back to them in a book but why wouldn't you want to speak to them why wouldn't you want to speak to them hmm. so we say oh in the mean so it doesn't mean that we have to reconnect it doesn't mean that oh whatever it, it, yeah it doesn't mean that you have to have the same friendship but it also doesn't mean that you see them on the road and pass them it also doesn't mean that you don't wish them well it also doesn't mean that you just do away with them it doesn't mean that so sometimes we ask this because right. we want for because that's what i did with my that's the first thing that i did with my uncle i said oh i forgive him but i don't have to talk to him and the holy spirit convict me and so oh, really no oh really what well, make why you don't have to talk to him why why you feel like you don't have to talk to him and the same goes for us guys mm -hmm. somebody hurt we why wouldn't you want to talk if you just if you say you forgive them and you truly have forgiven them why would you want to speak to them ask yourself that What's the real reason behind asking that question? What's the real reason behind justifying that action? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. That's correct. Um, Sainka said, do you think it's possible to get back to how things were prior to hurting? Honestly, I have a situation right now. We reconciled, but truth is, things are just things are just not the same. No, listen. Um, I was going. I, I had that particular situation a couple months ago. I think it was early this year, sometime in January. And someone, someone in in, in the past, we we started speaking again. It was it was just something random, and we started speaking again. However, the friendship that we had before, it is not the same because we stopped speaking for a while and what happened is it just completely damaged how I, how I really felt towards the person. Not saying that I hated that I hated or hate yeah. the person, just saying that what happened has changed my view of where we stand. If I I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to talk back to you then as, as shante said really, honestly you don't it's not a must that you, you have to to um have back that relationship with the person sometimes we can just apologize and go we can just apologize and go we don't need to fall back on the past yeah. we don't need to go back and you know oh this is what happened and sometimes a lot of times it's really guilt it's really guilt not saying you in a psycho but for me um I, in, at a particular stage in my life, it was because of guilt why I went back to some persons to talk to them. Yeah. And, ha and I know that that particular situation that I was in, it was toxic, it was hurting, yeah. and it was really guilt that allowed me. I'm like, oh, if I talk back to the person, maybe it's going to help somewhere to say, okay, let me see if I can build this back, see how we can move on from here if we build back the relationship. But if we're going to really, um, realistically speak, it, 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 it's not going to be the, the same well, as before. I object. I don't, I, it's not going to be like change. Will I change. Object. Yes, Shanti, go ahead. And I have a situation where um, someone and I, we our relationship was good, like good, 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 and um, we both hurt each other would hurt hurt each other and then like we know we'll bypass it and i said oh i forgive you but our relationship was kind of edgy and we said we'll forgive but we really never really forgive each other you know? and then when we really sat and spoke about it and we apologized and we confessed what we said about each other we confessed um how we felt towards each other our relationship got better than what it was before way better yeah, than that it was before. For you. so it mm -hmm. so it actually is possible it actually is possible that it can happen because i'm telling you man this person tick tick lover 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 our relationship has gotten so much better than it was before so yeah it is possible yeah. If listen, if some it, situations it, really can push you there, it, it, but, but not it, all the time, it though. Be, it's not all the time because both persons have to have that mindset. Both persons have to have that mindset that hey, yeah, we can get it better, we work. can get better from here. But if one person has the mindset and one person don't, mm -hmm. then just allow it to go whatever direction it chooses to go. But you don't force it because you might be forcing something that another person might not want. Don't force it, just allow it to go. Right. wherever it goes but make make sure that your heart is in the right place mm -hmm. um miss uh i think this lady lane yes. um, she said but what if the person is your destiny helper will you not speak to them exactly no <laughs> listen um i this is um opinion um the destiny helpers as we we've said before in, in previous um episode or destiny for me destiny helper i don't want i don't really want to be because i i've seen how it can affect you know things i've seen how it can affect the way how 
I communicate with them, it can affect the way how yeah. I speak with them and deal with them. Now, when your destiny helpers, they're your friends, then honestly, it's going to it's going to be a, a, a little, you know, rocky hard to to um you know say okay then because if your destiny helper speaks to you on something particular and then you are going to say oh ha huh, it's just you and we're friends so let we we can we can definitely you don't really have to pay this any mind it's fine let's all forget about it mm -mm. i don't i don't believe in that you can speak to them and as i said it's not this thing it's not a malice thing but you do speak with them because if they're your destiny helpers there must be some way um like even shanti with your with your situation we you said that you and the person you're like this now yeah. you're like this now right so it, that that can i would say even like a situation like that that could be even your destiny helper so she is he's just really finding a way how to you know make things work and all of that you see that that's it <laughs> like i said i'd say she was the best friend i've ever had the letdown was huge i don't manage her but a permanent decision she made you now puts her in a situation where we may forever be unable to be where we were how do i not what we lose what we have now on the situation every time we talk the issue lingers in the back of my head have you really dealt with that situation though mm. because i um let me use a situation with my best friend all right if we have a situation and i don't like something then and i say something and i say okay we need to talk about this let's i i put it right there and i say all right talk about it now talk about, it, about every single thing and just get it over with because we don't need to be repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating talking about the same thing over and over and over again so let's just talk about it and move on yeah. so once you lay everything down on, on the table and say all right then let's talk about this what what happened the cause how when why where then it shouldn't be um that every time you talk then it's still in the back of your head mm. i don't think you no know, you've really dealt with the situation yeah in, you get exactly. over that situation to say all right this happened and this is what really hurt me all right so did you really mention and say this is what really hurt me you can't know you can't be afraid to say yeah. this is what really hurt me because if you want to get over the situation then yeah yeah you just have to be straight up with it to be just put everything on the table and just say all right then let's talk about it the situation shouldn't linger yes. you have any touch on it yeah because um so in god that's your name i do hope i pronounced it right um i my ex-best friend he, it's a he my ex-best friend she she, she did something i won't tell you i won't say what she did but she did something and it really hurt me this was before i got saved by the way this was like 2015 and it really hurt me and uh, i i was upset i was upset but you know your best friend you know, so you know you're not to watch it but i was upset but what what made me decide to not allow the friendship to go back to where it was what made me decide that hey that if this friendship has to go, if I should really, like, I'm not going to say what really happened, but if I should really say what happened, it would justify my decision. Um, What made me decide to not allow it to, not allow the friendship to go on the way it was, is because she kept denying what she did. She kept denying that she did, and she kept denying, and I'm saying, but I know that it was you, I knew that it was you. She kept denying, she kept denying, she kept denying. I'm saying, you know what? Enough of this. This was before I got saved. When I got saved, um, mm -hmm. she texted me and she was like, we are still best friend hour. I'm going to say, I thought you got the drift that the friendship under the same. So she said, oh, I'm see people there. What's the things that you still right. friend with them? Blah, 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 blah. And I was upset. And I said, I'm not obligated to you. 
So I never deal with it because I was still young in my Christianity. So I didn't deal with it entirely. And then um, months afterwards, she texted me again. And I felt nothing. Like, I felt nothing. I said to her that, hey, this is what you did. And you knew it. And that's when, that is when she finally confessed that that is what she did. But by the time, that right. it, don't never, it don't never bother me no more. We don't know say she already. And I just allowed it to just, you know, go. But that's the reason why, that is the reason why our friendship is not the same again. It's not that I have not forgiven her. It's just that her denying it over and over and making it seem like I'm telling lies on her and making it seems like... um. May I come at her? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say, you know, it's not really worth it. Because if you can't come clean with me and you can't, you know, then what's the sense? So I talk to her. I We talk. I check up on her. But our relationship is not the same as it was. And then you know, me and her are two mm-hmm. different, different life, Like, completely different lives. And, you know, not saying that, not saying that, you know, she a bad company or not, but like influence could be a problem. So I guess that, I guess the Lord just cut it off from early because he knows that that will save me. But I forgive her. So mm-hmm. thank God if you do, I just tell tell him, tell your best friend, say hey, this is what you did, and you guys try to communicate it. And if your best friend now try to see where you come from and don't see where you can work it out on mutual grounds, then you let it go. But you don't have to force it to be what it was. You don't have to force it to be what it was. But always make sure, make sure that your heart is in the right place. Always make sure of that. That's my view. Yeah, you guys need to be on some mutual agreement. Um, Kira, I hope I pronounced the name correctly. Um, she said some relationships are coven- covenant too will try to fight it some friends are not just friends they are doors and portals to your breakthrough you fail to forgive them and you are stopping your own blessing so it's wise to forgive quickly or for help and i definitely agree with this so true. because i do have persons in my life and know that the relationship that we have it is covenant yeah. and the devil will fight it and whether you are christian or not i'm going yeah. to talk it plain straight and simple the, the the devil is out there we know we know that, that 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 the devil is out there right yeah so when he sees things like these covenant relationships like these that actually help us to you know actually help to push us in right then he's definitely going to try and fight it and somewhere or the other he's going to want these things mm-hmm. to cut he's going to find every loophole every door to come and push that person out and let you guys have something and it is up to you to really fight for this relationship because you know what god has placed you know the the, the weight that it carries yeah. so going to any um relationship any friendship you must know what right yeah and i definitely agree with your point kira me too um so yeah so i really don't believe that you know things just happen like that nothing happens like that so we have to fight for um some friendships and fight for some relationship because listen we have to know when to let go and we have to know what to hold on to and uh, this is where we really ask for help right and we don't want to just ask god for help because we like someone and we don't want to ask him for help because you all you want this person in our life listen you see people they're not our own for for our own yeah we can't get up and so i'm going to person because i know that they can help me with this or this person is around and i know the power that they got so one man always can always get that. No. Yeah, because it's, it's that's those true. if that that's where that what your relationship is based on, forget about it. 
forget about because that relationship is going to end See, faster than bro, Shani said uh, what is the hurt can i go can i go ahead go ahead oh yeah go ahead um I, I yeah, think yeah sure like go ahead a few days a few days before javon and i got got married um pastor and, and minister Lane of this thing called both of us and they were speaking to us and um they're in switch appearance so you know them talk to me and they, they speak to us on real grounds and mommy Ling, she said that um she was speaking about hurt i don't quite remember but she was saying that we have to be with hurt and forgiveness so that when our destiny help us come in our path we don't hurt them and push them away because they're here to help us right and i think it was like the day before or was the day yeah. after i don't remember but there's this guy here that has helped javon and i tremendously like may i tell you sir he's like a god assigned man for help with and but the thing about him is that he's very fragile meaning he has experienced some hurt before and the hurt that he has experienced caused him to be very guarded and like fragile like him very defensive so the slightest things even when you don't mean anything yeah. he will react so i don't remember what happened but he reacted to us in a way where we did feel a way about it and then when mommy leng said that and i really looked at it and i said you know say this guy has been hurt before we, we can't we can't to pay him the mind as in we can't allow his reaction to cause us to react back to him and then push him away so when he reacted yeah. when he reacted to us receiving the word from her we just humble and we just say you know what just understand where you come from and we just we just move on and like in doing that the guy do twice more than we did that before like okay explain and when i when i when i when i gave up my wedding invitations and i prayed and i said lord who not for come don't make them come who is only with me and not with job don't make them come who is only with job and not with me don't make them come who just have come for speculate who don't mean it's no good don't make them come and i think it's about like 16 people showed up and he was in the batch and that is when the lord said to me that hey this guy is a destiny mm. he's not a christian or anything you know but the, he has a good heart he has a good heart but it's just that the hurt that they have experienced he has experienced before caused him to just react and just defensive and if you if you follow him you would just react back towards him and just run him but we we have to we have to remember this when we deal with ourselves we we are protecting our destiny helpers we're not pushing them away mm -hmm. and that is important for us to understand guys just deal with yourself so you don't push away who's sent to help you you don't mess up the covenant relationships you don't mess up the friends who are doers to your progression you don't you know so yeah she's right she's right yeah all right correct um sayinka let me see if i can bring this up on the screen i just read this a while ago um you see and chante i think you will be able to help with this one too seeing that you're, you're, you're married, you're, you're a newlywed and stuff. Um, but I would say um, you just have to bear in mind that the person is married, Sainka. Um, thing, a, a lot of times, things do change when, when people get married. Like when my sister, she got married recently, I was like, oh, brother, I'm going to take her when she's not going to really come over anymore. We're not going to really be on the phone to talk anymore and a lot is going to change i'm not going to really have her around again just like that and i had thought that would linger around and like negative thoughts i i would i would like i'm going to miss shen like what's happening so 
my my thing is i'm just i just in that that little part and then shanti <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm <laughs> um, but just bear in mind that 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 the um person is, that the person is married great, looks, looks such a great you're not seeing everything i don't see what comes after that looks like a great friend be to recover from this permanent situation it really is such powerful and impactful friendship well um things will change though the, what i can say is that i just saw it go <laughs> like i don't know what else to say um if 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 the if the girl tries to explain to her husband that that's not how the relationship between you and her is and he's still not comfortable with it then there is really nothing that you can do and i know that it might hurt knowing the fact that you're going to lose such a good friend yeah that's so but true there's really there's really nothing yeah. that you can do you just have to accept it's it now. it could just be the will of the lord and if this is how it goes then this is just how it goes um don't hold it against her don't hold it against him you have to understand now that the two have become one and when to when when marriage occurs things aren't the same yep. things really aren't the same because yes when me when i could call my best friend and tell her anything i wanted to tell her you know i have to be careful because I have to protect my relationship with my husband. I can't. Be, I can't invite my friend. In, I can't invite That's my right. friend and everything. So things do change when people become married. It changes for the good. Sometimes it changes for the bad. It affects the relationship that you had with the person. But that's just how it is. And there's really nothing you can do. Well, Honestly, there really isn't. There really isn't. You just don't yeah. hold it against them. I agree with that so much. Yeah um so shani she she said what if the hurt um came it came in the form of trust being broken to what extent do you deal with the person after bearing in mind trust is not something that goes back like that if it even does um <laughs> trust that's a, that's a sticky situation i mean if the trust um was broken then i mean if, if it's a if it's a relationship you guys should be that you guys had and you guys were close before um i know persons in my circle that you know we've we, we've like and, and over some foolishness a lot of times we we, we don't talk and I feel as if, oh, if they tell me something or they, they just don't come to me just like that, then I'm going to feel as if, oh, oh um, you have something from me. And then I'm going to, you know, feel insecure. Yeah. Uh, that, that's how I would have felt back then. Like, I would have felt insecure, like, you're not telling me something. And that's the, the whole trust thing and all of that. Come on. And sometimes I can tell you that i was too way, like way too sensitive over certain situation like when i say way too sensitive like way too sensitive like if the person is doing something remember now they they, they they don't see anything wrong with what they're doing and it's just us to learn how to accept things sometimes as how they they they, they show up to us yeah. and just, as shanti even said we can't there's some things we just can't change because it's just how it is and if i know that trust that's some that very hard you know to really come back to you know it's it's not something that you can like just rebuild or if you guys are dedicated to rebuild that that friendship or that commitment then it, I, I believe that exactly. it can work i mean if, you, if it's if it's a mutual agreement that all right we're gonna work on this and we're gonna you know you know let's see what we can do fine but if you see that thing's just not working out i would say just leave it and let it go yeah i was just go, just leave it and let it go or do i deal with that hurting how you deal with it 
I'm not, I'm going to tell you something now and it's not spiritual. Um, what it, it's really, you know, finding, finding ways, finding things that you enjoy doing. Um, your best friend, your best friend is not married. So your best friend is going to change. You can't go with your best friend 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock, like one time. Yeah. All right. So you're going to just have to find new, new things to yeah. do. Uh, go out. I don't know. Can't say as an example, go to the gym, go to dance class, go to singing, go get some singing lessons, something. So to take your, not only take your mind off it, but you are, as we, you spoke about it tonight, so is to get because you have to be healed from these things. Yes. So it's going to you're going to all, yes. it's going to always linger in the back yes, of your head. So can, sit down and think about it. Right? How is it that I? Because you know the situation that you're in. As as well, you yeah, said sure. that you have to sure. you have to really deal with it, deal with it because ah <laughs> oh boy, I didn't remember this until this came up my i had friends and i had two friends that i was close to and both of them stopped talking to me at the same time right and it hurt me because you know love them friend right. friend for life you know them kind of meds there and both of them stopped talking to me at the same time and I, yeah i was so that. bitter me hurting now me i say yo any woman see them I go mash them up like I was so upset. I was so mega fight them. That's so upset I was. And like one time when Jamal and I were dating, I was sitting outside. I'm, I was crying. I mean, I cried. I say, oh, hold him for this to me. Hold him for this to me. How could they do this to me? And he must have been just easy, no? It's all right. It's not the end of the world. And I remember speaking to Minister Leng, Mommy Leng. And she said, I. That, that was a time when the Lord was showing me my best friend now. She, she's right in my field of mm -hmm. vision. She's there right in my field of vision. You know, I'm a can't see her. She's like right there. And I couldn't see her because I was so blinded by the hurt that I was experiencing. And she said to me, say, why you cry over copper and God give you gold? And when she said it, I was like, what's she talking about? What's your kind of couple and goals she talking about? What is she talking about? And that is when my best friend just appeared in front of me clearly, clear as day. And if I didn't deal with it, if I didn't deal with that hurt that I was feeling, I wouldn't be connected to my best friend now because my best friend is more than just a best friend because the Lord told me that he, he placed her in my life. Or like a Jonathan and David type of friendship, souls yeah. knitted together type of thing. That's what the Lord said to me concerning my best friend, that we have ministry together. She was, she, she was basically one of my destiny helpers because I had the gift, I, had a, I can sing, but I don't like, I'm not like do it because I don't think I sing well. And it's when she came in my life that I started singing. And that is when I went, that is when I started to do the praise and worship because of her. So, I still like singing, right? You see, I look like I got asked to sing tonight. Don't even dare. <laughs> so, when she sing, I we sing together. Yeah. If you guys know, if you guys know, you guys know me talk about Tajina Ibra, big up yourself. I... But I had to deal with the hurt so that I could see my best friend. And sweetie, just deal with it. Um, I know it hurts. I know it hurts. I know it hurts. But just see God concerning it. Because God is concerned about these areas of our life. Yes. It's not just about the spiritual areas. It's not just about church and praying and fasting. No, God cares about woman that's, problems there. That's it. God cares about with sex life. God cares about um, our friendships. He cares about these things. So it's important that you seek the Lord That's right. where this thing is concerned. You pray about it. And just say, God, it hurts, but let your will be done. And when you deal with it, then God just might send you a friend that ride it through with it because yes. the friendship that I have with my best friend, my husband, 
this is like God grace him for understanding the friendship that I have with my best friend. Even though I don't tell her everything, he allows me to speak to her. If she to call Pick me. Up Javo and- if she call me, um, he allow me to talk to her like any hours of the night. You know, you know, I have to have a limit or anything, but like any hours of the night, he not think twice about it because he know say God yeah. placed me and me and her friendship together. God placed it together. And you just might get that. You just might get that that even when you and her when even when she's married or even when you are married, you don't have to worry about the friendship that you have. Even when you're miles away, because I'm in Canada and she's in Jamaica and every day it feel like we're at the same place. So you just might be blessed with that, but as mm-hmm. long as you make room for it in your heart, then you'll be alright. You'll be alright. Yeah. You'll be alright. And it's really you know, all of these things that we're talking about, um, forgiveness is really us now to accept things for what they are. Exactly. Just accept it. Change it. There's nothing that you can do about it. You accept it. Accept it. Accept it. Accept it. And before we before we wrap up, um. We, this, uh, this is a point that, that I wrote down today that I definitely wanted to, to tell you guys. Um, recognize the value of forgiveness and how it can dramatically improve your life. Yeah. Carrying around the pain and the hurt only leads deeper pain and hurt, which is unnecessary. Um, as I said, we, as we said before, talk about it. All right? When you forgive to me, people, when you forgive, you find redemption. Yeah. In situations that you would like, you would not believe that you know I would feel so free after all this passes by. You understand? So learn to forgive. You find redemption in forgiveness. Um, it's a beautiful feeling. Before we go, um, Shanti, do you have anything? Do you have anything to add? Yeah, I was just saying something. <laughs> Forgiveness is a beautiful feeling. It is because, like, when you can, when you can look back on all that you have experienced and the persons that have, you know, might have hurt you or whatever, and you can look back on them and because even the same two girls that I said to you that um hurt stopped speaking to me at the same time. Our relationship eventually got back together mm-hmm. and we're good again. We're not best friend and everything like one time but we're good again love them i love them so much we call them talk to them every day yeah. and when you when you when you experience those things and then you can look back and you can you know feel nothing in your heart towards them hey man i'm gonna tell you something man yes. it feels good yes. it feels good guys it feels good, good. <laughs> Trust me. Good, 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 I, good, 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 good. I good. just encourage you guys that like, even though it, even, listen, man, even though it hurts, even though it hurts, you can do it. You can do it. Don't tell yourself, say you can't do it. Don't tell yourself, say it's impossible because being unforgiving is you being unwilling. It's not a strong, it's not a strong yes. hold. It's you being unwilling. You have to make up in your mind. You are you, you know, want to do it, yes. So, guys, you can do it, you can do it, you will do it, you will overcome this, you will testify of forgiveness. Every single person that was on this, you will testify that you were able to, to let go of something that you have been holding on to for years. Yeah, I gotta do it. Now, ask, now, ask you, yeah, I gotta do it. So, guys, that's my piece, and mm-hmm. I just I look forward to the testimonies. Maybe Megan need to come back to know one day and say, hey, my heart. And you have to say, hey, man, why you did say it, you know? Why you did say it? <laughs> 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 the guys will be all right. Be all right. Oh, my gosh. Honestly, I, I can say that, that this topic, you can go on and on and on and on and on about it. And I really enjoyed it this topic i really enjoyed this live and i can that's helped me too and because we and listen we we you don't just get rid of these things yeah. overnight sure. so take time with yourself if 
you're the person that that if you need to forgive yourself take your time you don't need it's not that it's not something that you're gonna it's gonna happen over time yeah especially if you know that it's just something that you know it dramatically affected you right it's going to the, the healing process listen the healing process is never always just one two and boom that's yeah. it me heal no it's going to take time so don't fight yourself don't pressure yourself too much take your process enjoy the process because as my pastor would say if you're going through hell why would you want to stop there keep going through your hell because you're coming out you're coming out better stronger than ever all right so That's forgive great. yourself people and as i said earlier on you you you're listening you're listening from night and, and that is like some conviction is there to go back and apologize to someone as this life is over or uh, if you want to text them set a reminder on your phone call them tomorrow if, if you think it's too late but you need to, to to make things right you need to you know come make make things right and say okay you know what i'm really sorry for what i did i'm really sorry for what i did and don't throw a tantrum now yeah if the person um to give some gratitude and stuff apologize and leave it there all right yeah so uh, i want to thank mrs codner <laughs> who is not going to sing for us tonight <laughs> I want to thank you so much, so much really for sorry, joining us. And listen, this was this was amazing. This was definitely amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time out to come and speak to us on this topic. Um, I really do appreciate it. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for joining. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to everyone that has been tuning in over the week. Um, yeah, next week we'll be having drumroll next week we'll be having minister stacy and garvey and we will be talking about your past does not define you all right so you know we have our past and yeah you just can't seem to let it go listen i have some very spicy and nice topics for you and i think that god is giving me the right person yeah for, for these specific topics it's just a blessing to have you know kingdom builders um you know coming together to to help all right so i'm going to be posting the flyer immediately after i just want to thank you guys so much shanti you can go to your husband now i believe that it is pretty late over there yeah, you can go to your husband now so you guys can have a blessed night thank you so much be sure to tune in um next week friday 7 p.m same time next week um subscribe to the youtube channel um i'll be posting the video there or anyone you know they're not on facebook we always post the live on youtube yeah um so they can view it always it always yeah. premieres uh next day which will be tomorrow at 11 p.m so you can check that out all right so go and subscribe thank you guys so much for joining and i will see you guys next week Bye. thank you and have a blessed night everyone <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>